What's up everyone, I'm Mussy, and today I'm joined by fitness mogul Joseph Rakic, here with the McLaren 570S to take him around the track at Hampton Downs. So I just hope you trust my driving ability. <laughs> For the record, I own, not only have a mixtape, but I'm a good driver. So you're in safe hands, man. Awesome, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Let's get started. Let's go. Hey guys, so we've got Joseph Rakic sitting in the car with me, uh, going around the track in a 570S, which is one hell of a car. My first thought straight off the back is, uh, People usually call this a baby McLaren or the entry level McLaren. And I definitely don't think that's the case. 562 horsepower. And man, this thing really goes. It's like if someone had a baby that weighed like 10 kgs as soon as it was born, <laughs> like that's what type of baby this car is. How yeah. you enjoying it so far? Straight beast day. Eh? I'm enjoying <laughs> it, man. Uh, you can feel the power of this car. First time I've been on the track as well, so it's cool. Yeah. Cause you're real into your cars as well. What do you drive right now? Yeah, I'm real into my cars. I don't know much about cars to be honest. Like I'm not much of a boy racer or if, if like you look at the engine, I don't know too much about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I love supercars and I got appreciation for supercars. Yeah. So right now I've got a Huracan. Oh, those are nice. Big V10 engine in yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. And nice before enough. that you had a Galato yeah, as well. Yeah, before that I had a Galato. I and had you, that for a few years. You must be loving those uh, massive V10 engines. Oh, I love it. There's so much power in it, man. Yeah. It just, <laughs> you know, get the adrenaline yeah. you know, when you're behind the wheel. Even right now, man, this is one hell of a car. Like sitting so low to the ground as well. Yeah. It's, it's quick. This thing is, might be called a baby, but this thing is really quick. It goes hard. First of all, you've built what is pretty much a fitness empire and it's pretty admirable what you've done. Uh, over the years and at such a young age. How did you first get into the fitness industry? When was the first time you lifted a weight? Um, <laughs> it all started back at high school, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I've always loved PE. I've loved, you know, running outside. I've loved cross country, soccer, touch rugby, whatever it was, yeah. anything physical, I loved. Funny enough, funny enough though, at school when we had the weights room, yeah. I always forgot my clothes. <laughs> yeah. And that was because I was a skinny guy and I just thought, why would you want to lift some weights? Just yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but my mum one day, she won a free gym trial, which oh, was yeah. a two-week membership. Yeah, yeah. She didn't want it, so she gave it to me. I went along to the gym. I didn't really have passion or enjoy the gym as such, but yeah. I was. I knew some people at the gym. I was friends with them, and it kind of became a social environment. So I went there to basically hang out and yeah, yeah. talk smack, you know? Yeah. <laughs> After the two weeks, I joined up to the gym because of that that aspect of it yeah, yeah. and I started going you know consistently I guess every now and again wasn't following a good diet or wasn't following a good workout program and I didn't have a love for the sport at the moment however I did start to notice my physique change yeah. and I started to notice I was gaining some muscle yeah once I noticed that that's when I got more serious about my training mm. more serious about my diet I started doing my own research and I guess that's when it came from something that I didn't really enjoy to my hobby and now years and years later um, it turned into my passion yeah. what I live and breathe now yeah, yeah. and now it's turned into my career but I guess the results kind of came as I started applying more knowledge into what I was doing finding out what was the best diet to follow finding out what the yeah. best workout program was to follow and then applying that to myself yeah yeah no, that's a pretty inspirational story. What, do you remember your first lift by any chance? Or what, My first what were you lift, really into? Everyone nah, has a favorite lift when they yeah, start. Yeah, I right? honestly don't know, but like when I first started, yeah. it was basically just biceps and chest every day because yeah. <laughs> why train your legs? Yeah. And yeah. I'm not going to work my back because I can't see my back. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Later on down the track that I find out that was like small minded. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then yes, I train every muscle group now. <laughs> so what is a normal, what's a normal day like for you um, with your meal timing and your workout timing? Yeah, a normal day for me. So um, I don't really wake up too early. Yeah. Like I'm not one of these guys that wake up at 4 a.m. and go do cardio. I kind of, you know, sleep's important. Yeah. And I kind of think I'm not going to jump over $100 bills to pick up pennies. Yeah, yeah. So I, I get my sleep in, but I, I wake up at 6.15, um, have a coffee, you know, meditate for a bit. 6.30, I'm doing my cardio. Yeah. 7.15, finished. Yeah. Go have a shower, pack my bags for the day, get ready. 7.30, um, I have my meal one, <laughs> which yeah. is breakfast. Yeah. Then 8 o'clock, have a pre-workout, and then off to the gym about 9.30 or 10 once my meal's digested. Yeah, yeah. Um, but before I go to the gym, I do an hour and a half to maybe two hours worth of work, depending on when I had breakfast. Go and smash the weights for an hour and a half to two hours maximum. Then shower, have my second meal, 
and then the rest of the day um, varies quite often depending on what I've got on. Um, like today, this interview. <laughs> <laughs> Drive around the track yeah. in the McLaren. Yeah. But the start of my day always usually yeah. starts off like that. Yeah. So what got you into meditation? That's a pretty interesting point. Is that something you've been doing for a long time? Nah, very recent. So I don't meditate as, like, I wouldn't really call it, a, you know, a strict form of meditation, but I just kind of, you know, as soon as I wake up, I have a coffee yeah. and I just either sit outside or sit somewhere quiet, just drink my coffee. I don't have my phone near me. I don't yeah. have social media. So my, my mind's not ticking on all these different things. And I just think about things and just like kind of let my mind clear. And once I've done that, and once I've yeah. finished the coffee, then I go and start my cardio. Yeah. And that's when I, you know, have access to my phone. But I just like to give myself, you know, 15 minutes a day where I'm just free in my mind. Well, that's real interesting because I reckon in this day and age with uh, mobile phones, like they act as a constant stimulus for someone. Yeah. And I always like calling it dopamine fingers, right? People so are addicted to it and they, they get hits of dopamine every time they get a like, so a comment, true. a follower. So I reckon and you have to check your phone all exactly. the time. Exactly. It dopamine, becomes yeah. an addiction, and it's like almost like a chemical um, reaction in your brain that relies on it. Um, so that even in our mentoring with our kids within the charity, one thing we're introducing is um, mentoring. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, uh, meditation within our mentoring, uh, because nowadays, I mean, our generations were a bit better off uh, in terms of. Uh, not depending on technology so much, but these kids have laptops, cell phones, iPods, everything, and they're just, from the day they were born, they're yeah. in this world, and I think meditation plays a real crucial uh, Definitely. part in this. And I think, like, the hardest thing in this day and age yeah. is being present where you actually are. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. I, I always go by a quote, wherever you are, be there. So yeah. if I'm in a meeting, I'm gonna be there in the meeting and not on my phone or not, you know, drifting off. Yeah. As good as social media is, it is also bad. Like there's pros and cons. Like yeah. I feel like social media has disconnected us, but also connected us. Yeah. Like it's disconnected us in the fact that we go out for dinner with our family or our friends now. Instead of communicating to each other, we're all on our phones. So yeah. it's disconnecting you know the what? social environment. I also find that people, like when they go on trips or even dinner, like the reason they go for that is just to post on social media. I know. I find that so yeah. frequently. Yeah. <laughs> I think Drake actually rapped about it that. Um, people just go on holiday just to say they've been on holiday yeah, to show everyone, show everyone. <laughs> they've been on holiday. It's less about the experience these days. Exactly. And, uh, more so about flexing on it, everyone in a way. So it's disconnected the yeah. world, but at the same time, again, you've got to look at the positive. It has connected the world as well. Like, I've made so many friends from all over the world, from different countries. Yeah. I've been in America. I've met up with some people I don't know, but yeah. only through social media. Yeah. We've caught up in how to train. Yeah. For example, you, you know, we met through social media. Yeah. So it has connected people, so it's good and bad. Um, but yeah, I just say, don't don't be used by social media. Use, Use social, social media. media. Oh. Yeah. You guys, that's another top tip from Joseph Rackage. You heard it here <laughs> first. Yeah. Amazing quote. Use social media, don't be used by it. <laughs> there we go, million dollar quote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, so what do you think of the um, coding on this car? It's got a, it's pretty interesting. It's not a vinyl wrap, it's yeah. a spray on wrap which they spray using a, just like they do OEM paint. Would you get something like this? I'd love it. Like yeah. when I, as soon as I got here, I was like, man, this car's sick. This paint is awesome. And then I realized it wasn't paint. Like it looks so perfect. Yeah, it's crazy. So I was talking to the guy, Victor, from Autoflex. And I was like, man, this is a sick paint job. And he's like, nah, it's not paint, it's a wrap. Yeah. And I was like, it doesn't even look like a wrap. And then he was explaining to me that it's actually a liquid wrap. So they spray it on instead of put that sticker. So I felt, yeah. I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> Um, with the fitness industry, I mean, you're definitely shredded, bro. You're ready for RMV, as they would say. Um, <laughs> Shredding for RMV. But you've honestly taken it to a different level. There's a difference between someone who's shredded and someone who builds a brand around it. So, were you always a hustler? Uh, but did you always have that entrepreneurial mindset ever since you were a kid? Um, I honestly don't think so. As I was a, as a kid, yeah. When I was a kid, I was pretty, I guess, just clueless, and I was just kind of floating through life, I guess. Yeah. So a lot of my life, I didn't really have any ambition or what I wanted to do. Yeah. I was always interested in sports and wanted to do better with sports. Yeah. But definitely as I got older, I got more, my mindset changed and things that I was interested in changed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't think I was born with like the entrepreneur mindset or anything. So like to me, that's interesting because an entrepreneur, if someone uses that uh, term, I think it's not an occupation. I think it's a mindset. Yeah, it's someone I've, who's open to opportunities, and I, I guess 
I guess that describes you in a way. You're just open to opportunities and you pursue it and uh, make it work. That's so uh, true. Pretty interesting. Um, yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned that because uh, I just came from a school before. We donated about $3,000 worth of stuff. And uh, it wasn't so much so like, I mean, a lot of kids, like you were saying, they don't really know what they're doing. Uh, and they're not focused on one certain thing. But what we got them to do is write down three things that they like on a bit of paper. And we got went out and bought them like $300 worth of stuff, depending on what they wrote down. So That's some so of them, awesome. Yeah, so some of them got uh, action cameras and boxing gloves. Uh, one little girl actually started crying instantly. Because oh, we, we work with low decile schools. Yeah. She instantly saw, so we bought her uh, a sketch pad, a digital sketch pad you can plug into a laptop and draw. Oh, and as man. soon as she saw that, started bawling her eyes out and was so grateful. But um, that's the same thing. Oh, we... that's, that's touching me in the feels. Like, that's cool. I like that <laughs> yeah. stuff. Thank you. Yeah. I love what I do and I do what I love. And I think, <laughs> yeah. and I honestly believe that's the most important thing yeah. in life. Like, there's so many people out there who are doing, I guess, stuff that they're not 100% happy or 100% satisfied with. Yeah. I believe to do well in whatever you want to do, you have to truly love and you have to truly have passion for it. Yeah, yeah. That's like the charity, man. Like, <laughs> at first, my parents were like, Musi, what the hell are you doing? You should be focusing on your own career. Um, but to me, there's no better feeling in the world than to see someone else succeed. Exactly. Someone smart. I guess that, that's with you and your clients. Like, yep. your clients go through amazing transformations under your plans and stuff. And you know, just that feeling that you put in the effort to make someone else's life better. I know. There's, it's honestly such a... People talk about dopamine fingers from phones. That's like a dopamine fingers from a, a good act. In a yeah. Moment. It's amazing, right? Yeah. So true. And I, yeah, I honestly believe, like happiness to me, especially once I've got older, yeah. is making other people happy. Yeah. If I can make other people happy with their transformation and changing their physique, that yeah. makes me happy. When I was a kid and young, like it was kind of just like, oh, well, what am I getting for Christmas? What am I like? That's what makes you happy when you're a kid. Like it's all about you. Yeah. But as you grow older, your happiness comes from making other people happy. Yeah. So that's definitely the case. And one thing I love Jared. about the fitness industry, I mean, it's definitely booming right now. But when someone goes to the gym, they plan their diet out. It's a form of self-respect, right? Mm -hmm. And yep. that's that's what I appreciate the most. And I always tell myself, like, yeah, I might have a, a bad day and things might come falling down but at the, at the end of the day I'm left staring at myself in the mirror and if, and you can physically see that self-respect and it just reminds you that there are better days you know and it's such a I, I think fitness and uh, is such a crucial aspect of one's life not necessarily so I mean getting shredded and stuff is amazing but also the um, just looking after yourself and self-respect yeah. it's, it's crucial exactly and yeah. even just um, having some form of, form of dis discipline. Yeah. Even if it was only going, you know, to the gym three days a week or something like that, just having that discipline to do something, it yeah. helps in so many other areas of your life. Mm. And I've seen you take it to ne the next level with your fitness. Um, I recall one time you were actually, you got down to such a low body fat that you actually got to hospital for yeah. it. <laughs> and for me, it's like, it's amazing because you have so much control over your body which yeah. is really admirable um, and it, I think that's really a strong technique someone develops to be able to tune their body so uh, precisely yeah and, and honestly it was, it was so interesting as well yeah. and I'm so interested about it and I guess for me like I've got a really obsessive personality yeah so if I do something I either do it 100% yeah. or I don't really do it yeah yeah and so with getting lean one time I just wanted to get as lean as I could like I wanted to take shredded to the next level yeah so I dieted and dieted and dieted. My calories kept dropping. Yeah. I th it was quite a while ago now, many years ago, but I think I got down to like 1,600 calories and like an hour of cardio per day, Whoa. plus two hours of weights. Yeah. And like, I was actually so lean that I couldn't even pinch like skin on my arms really. It was like <laughs> pinching skin on my forearm. Yeah, wow. And I, I remember looking in the mirror thinking, this looks disgusting, I'm so lean. <laughs> yeah. Like I knew it didn't look good. I knew it was like too far like lean. Yeah. But this weird obsessive personality of mine was like, can I take this even further? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, yeah, I was just so, you know, perfect with everything. Like I even remember I had five dried apricots yeah. during my workout, intro workout. Well, what's the and reason for that? It was just, you know, for a little bit extra energy when I'm running on so low oh, calories. Yeah. Yeah. And then I remember like I wasn't losing any more fat, so I dropped two apricots out. Oh, and then, so that's then I dropped real two fine tuning. That was so fine tuning. Wow. And me just thinking back now, like, that is like, yeah. that is nutty almost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank <laughs> you.